All right, now this is the fresh header pin that we just put in. Okay, and what I do here is I like to spread the heat out so I don't stay on one. I just move from pin to pin just to dissipate the heat on the top. Yeah, those look like the, uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, uh, the Empire Strikes Back, those walkie things. <laughs> I lifted these off the board, uh, again, for heat dissipation. And again, if you look, we have the band lining up with the arrow. So uh, current flows that way. Okay, now we're going to get to the bridges. Bridge rectifiers. Okay. Probably can't tell, but the notch here, which I'll show you here, is the positive side, and it's marked negative here. And I'll show you why that means uh, something. The positive one, I'll show you up here, it's a little better. It's actually offset. So one, two, three are perfectly lined. The fourth kind of moves in. And it's the same on the board. So you can see that one, two, sorry, one, two, three <laughs> are square, and then this one is off a bit. And the more the board is actually marked as well. Um, this is a good example. That little minus there. And trust me, there used to be a plus on this side, but that's how the bridge goes. So basically it's going to fit as such. Now, again, this bridge is not the proper bridge for this uh, board. It's, it's bigger, and that's why we have to put it on top, because you wouldn't be able to get it back on the bottom. So basically they're going to stick up like this, and I'm going to solder them up. And we're just about done after that. So let me let me bring you back, okay? Bridge is installed. New diodes there. And the next thing we're gonna do, put the proper fuses in. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna power this thing up. Nice and high that way, they cool. And we can put they call them heat sinks that um, sucks the heat off the top of these. It literally like, you know, pulls it off and then uh, lets the air cool it down. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's good to go, but uh, you never know. We'll test it, we'll go from there. So we're gonna bench test the power supply now after it's all been nice and tidied up and cleaned. Uh, these are circuit breakers. Uh, these are fuses, okay, proper values. And I've got circuit breakers I'll show you what they do that are the proper value for each one of those holes. So here's the, here's how they work. So this is a 15 amp. Uh, this doesn't take 15 amp. That's why I'm not utilizing it. But what happens? It's just a, it's just a fuse that you plug in. And if it pops, these are resettable. So all you do is you just press the button. So it's basically, again, a circuit breaker soldered onto a, a fuse that has it has to be popped and current goes through if it's uh exceeds uh, the amount of amperage it'll pop the fuse okay this is a just a cheap way of actually testing things so that you're not constantly replacing fuses i know they're they're a buck a piece but uh, trust me sometimes when you're going through 10 fuses uh, it gets pretty expensive so <laughs> here's our multimeter i'll show you really quickly uh, when we get into that now how are we going to test if it's not a game sam we don't have a plug well what we have is a this is a pinball body on a piece of wood bought a whole bunch of cabinets once and i stripped one and i just put it on this nice convenient uh portable uh body for lack of a better word and what it does is it allows me to be able to take the plug plug it into a power supply and test the power supply. So this plugs into a plug, into an outlet. Okay, 
So now uh, it's just like when you flick the switch on the bottom of your Valley pinball machine. This is uh, this is the guts that runs everything. So I can actually test uh, credits with it. I can test uh, like coins. I got to do some fixing here because the <laughs> wire came off. Uh, I can test flippers. I can test uh, tilt mechanisms. I can even plug into the auxiliary port if I need to. And then this, uh, these wires here plug into either the head or the play field or, um, you know, different parts of the game. So it's basically what it is. Uh, got a nice portable package. So, okay, let's turn this thing on. Now I'm going to pop the on button. This light's going to light up here to tell me that this thing is live. The transformer will make a very low hum. And that's how we know it's on as well. well. Let me show you a couple of things before we get into it, because we are going to be testing voltages utilizing the uh, schematic. No. Um, okay, how did I find ground? That's the most important part. There's ground there. So J1, J2, J3. Don't worry about what any of this stuff does, okay? But what we have here on the power supply is J1. This is position one, J2. Sorry, I can't point at it, guys. So above the J2, you'll see a position one. And then this is J3. Starts position one, goes to position 20. Okay, you see 20 there. And it's all right here. Okay, so all this is this. So here's J1. And we know this is J1 because there's only eight spots same thing here if you count them there's only eight spots j2 there's only 10 spots here's j2 there's only 10 spots and j3 trust me 20 spots and there's 20 spots in that where did i find ground okay these are all the bridges but we're actually going to test the voltages at the test points okay and i'm going to go through the exercise to do every one for you Okay, and here's ground. So that's the universal um, denotation or a symbol for ground. So the ground, I can't find it here. I have no idea where to find it here. But if I follow ground, ground is basically, see how that dot and all these dots? That means all these are a potential source of ground. So I draw the ground. So I went to the lowest one, uh, pin one on J3. There's pin one on J3. Okay, so here's my source of ground. Sorry guys, not easy to press the <laughs> to point when you can't see. All right, we're gonna turn this thing on. Hopefully there's no uh, magic smoke. All right, what do you wanna see? Okay, we'll do this. No, I'll turn it on, you'll hear it. Okay, nothing popped. That's telling me it's on. This is good. Nothing's popping. There's no smoke coming out of this thing. I gotta tell you, these things do get warm. These things get really hot. Those uh, sand resistors. So now let's check some voltages. So I'm gonna turn the light back on. Sorry if I'm bouncing all around, guys. But so I have my multimeter plugged. So the black line is ground. So I just have it hooked up to ground. And there's ground. Okay, now we're going to test the voltages at the test point. So the first thing we're going to do, remember I said before there's AC and DC? Uh, we're going to go to DC. So here's off. This is the straight line is direct current, okay? Bang. Now, what so? The first one we're going to look at, well, let's start at the beginning. It's test point one. We should hit four 5. volts 4 DC. Volts DC. Remember, this isn't in the game. So it's not being drawn down by any of the features of the game. So the voltages are going to vary. Uh, some of them might vary considerably, but I won't be too uh, disappointed as long as I get something, you know, relatively close. And what relatively means, well, that's open for interpretations. But test point one, I should get 5. around 54. Here's my multimeter. Again, I have it set to DC. Here's test point one, as indicated. So I'm touching it here. And I'm getting 6.12 volts. So 5.4, 6.1, that's perfectly good. 
Okay, now we're going to go to test point two. 230 volts. These things vary like crazy uh, when you get into display power. So if it's off by whatever, I'm not too concerned. Obviously, we'll figure it out when we put it in the game. But I have a jig for that as well where we're gonna test the displays and everything. Just makes it easier instead of bending over the game and whatnot. So we're looking for on test point two around 230 volts. Here's test point two. For some reason, the little tab is busted off. Doesn't really matter. And we have 180. Okay. Now, so, and if you look too, you see the, the V there for volts. Okay. Now we're off. Now we're gonna to go to test point three. Test point three, we're looking for 11.9 a DC again it's still on DC we're at test point three 12.38 so we're good okay I'm just touching it and remember the other side is hooked up to a ground okay test point four now this is where we're gonna have to flip the multimeter over to AC and this is really easy to miss but if we look at test point four see that's a 7.3 volts AC all right, so what we're doing here is we're gonna flip it over to AC. Let's see, test point four. Okay, we're touching it. And it's showing us 7.24. Okay, and then you see the uh, the AC line too, the squiggly line, right, right there. That tells you you're on AC. If you put it on DC, you're not gonna hurt anything. Here, I'll show you. Okay, put it back to DC. I'm checking test point four with DC and it's given us like nothing millivolts it's like all right but if I flip it back DC test point four bang gives us the seven point uh, that we're looking for and then test point five is 43 volt remember when we did the MPU and I told you that uh, the seventh flash wouldn't light because it's waiting for 43 volts well that's what this is okay so I'm gonna go back to AC or sorry back to DC that's 0.5, and I've got 44.2. And again, we were looking for 43. <laughs> uh, we have a very good, uh, nice looking power supply too. Uh, it's not hacked. And I love the way those uh, bridges are sitting on top. It's gonna run this thing nice and cool. Anyways, I hope in some way, shape or form, this either entertained you, uh, hopefully it didn't confuse you, and maybe hey you know give you uh, the opportunity to try something maybe get you out of your your comfort zone and you know try to try to do something like this as well well uh, this is you know a lot of years of experience of just fooling around and getting in trouble and popping fuses and luckily you know thankfully knock on wood uh, not lighting the house on fire but I, <laughs> anyways guys listen uh, be safe stay well uh, and we will talk to you soon Rush fan, out.